How's it going, Ion? Doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. How about yourself? Cannot complain. Trying this new sound thing one more time. I know. Hey, 3.0 is the way to go. Or 2.2.1 going to live. <laughs> uh-huh. I wonder about the Star Citizen VoIP. I wonder if that's going to be a thing. It will. In time. Ah. Looking forward to it. Welcome to Station 42. I'm your infamous host, Vadran Malik, and with me today is our co-host... Traz, I am coast to coast. Can't even say my name right. <laughs> hey, and I'm Station 42's technical lead. And I just want to let you guys know that tonight's show is brought to you in, in part by Big Ben's Pizza Delivery. When Big Ben makes pizza... He likes it to be cooked the right way, which is why he used specially crafted uranium ovens that lightly radiate each pie to perfection. Mm -hmm. And with over 35,000 toppings, you're going to be sure to find one that you're craving when you crave it. Our high-speed warp delivery system drones are able to deliver it to your door hatch in 30 minutes or less, or your credits are coming right back to your pocket. So when you think of space pizza delivery, you need to think of Big Ben's. Available in a system near you. Additionally, our broadcast is... Sorry. Hmm, what you got? Well, no, 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 no. I, no. I, I wonder if what, they what? have uh, Xeon uh, space plant toppings. Well, <laughs> we, can probably, we can probably put that in there. They're, they're, they're a really diverse cu uh, customer. I understand uh, that they send us a lot of money, so you know, I'm pretty sure that's there. Right? Right. Xeon, Xeon Artichoke. Oh, hard pizza, please, with a you know white sauce topping. I'll, I'll go for that. Mm, go. <laughs> Honey, additionally, get that Gian topping. Additionally, <laughs> our broadcast is supported in part by the Star Citizen Facebook community. That's uh, AKA the Ready Player One group, Star Citizen subreddit, Twitch, Twitter, and of course the amazing people at CIG who keep our community thriving. So if you're a backer, or if you're about to be, or you know a certain horse that you think that you can afford an account for, then we're the show for you. So sit back and enjoy the hot sauce, pasta, pasta, pasta. Who writes this shit? Uh, of Station 42. Bro, can you not pronounce space pasta? <laughs> say hot sauce. Oh, I, love I love you so much. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. Sorry so much. Godric and I are just space trolling on our favorite hosts. So, uh, but right, yes. Uh, our <laughs> show tonight is brought to you with creative support by Mr. Irv Nation, Space Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive or Dead, according to this year's bounty report. All things considering about Space Magazine is since it's in space, they don't usually get to see a lot of people. Today's show is, uh, I'd like to also introduce our special guest, Mr. Joey Wright, uh, fellow Star Citizen, killing it all the way from Texas area. Joey, how are you tonight? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. It's a pleasure to have you on board. I'm happy to be here. Try to say something. Nudge, nudge. Huh? <laughs> yeah, man. No, hey, you know, I've, I've known Joey, Joey a long time, so it's, it's good to have him on the show. You know, we're comfortable chatting it up, so uh, it should make it super easy. Um, glad to have you here, man. Yeah, this is just like all our other conversations, only this time I have on pants. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what? Well, well, well. If it isn't the dirty, infamous space rascal, Next eighty six. There you but go. You can't. You can't prove that, though. You can't match the the name to the face just yet. I know, right? Se oh, wait, 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 wait. Sex, uh, sexy next. What? Next. I told sex? you. I told you it was the difference between hotmail and hotmail. Like the way you the way you actually spell the word mail. Man, that's so next. Uh. Whoa! Oh! Oh! We're going for the all right. Anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, hey, hey, hey! All right. So word on the dodgy data line is that you've acquired an Idris to flagship your bacon acquisition plans. Come verse launch. Inquiring minds demand you tell us more, more. Like, like where I got the Idris or what? No, no, I man. Just, just like uh, you know, what? Tell no. us about. What, what are you doing with that sexy beast? That's a huge investment. Well, we plan on taking it and flying it at the sun, but not into the sun because that's dumb. <laughs> but um, 
Uh, come launch time, we're going to try to put together a fleet, like a self-sustaining fleet, and pick a direction in the galaxy and just go, see how long we can last. And we've got a, we've got a good number of people on board with it so far, so it could be pretty fun. Yeah, no, it sounds, sounds right up my alley anyway. Uh, how about you, Adrian? I'm just kind of wondering about the uh, poor Crucible guys that are going to follow you behind you and <laughs> pick up all the, all the mess. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so far we got, like, a, an Idris, a few scouts, you know, a hangar full of uh, sabers, a crucible, and a starfare. And we're hoping that the starfare, you know, knowing absolutely nothing about it is enough to support all those ships. So if two Aegis ships fight each other and they happen to be sabers, is it a saber dance? Only if the tips touch. Ouch. Mm-hmm. You killed my father, <laughs> prepare to die. <laughs> I am Tinegro Antoya. You have killed my father. Prepare to die. Don't do it, Annie. I have the high ground. Oh, wait. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> moving on. Who took the legs right out from under that joke? Yeah, I know. No kidding. And a few other things. Anyway, I'm having really quietly bad thoughts. Continue on. Your... Yeah, quietly laughing with your mood, huh? Okay. So, all right, about the the Idris and Jadalyn coming up in the monthly report, are we seeing the final stages of development? Can you somebody give me some feedback on that one? Well, um, yeah, the monthly report, it was uh, it mentioned the, the Idris and the Jav both a couple of different times, actually, from different departments. It seems like uh, it's they're talking about it being in its final stages of, of development. Um, and it's actually seeing some early flight testing. Okay, so they're actually flying the javelin. The background. Yes. They're flying, they they're flying the Idris. Did they say they're flying oh, the javelin? No, Idris. No, I'm sorry. Did I say javelin? I'm to totally backwards tonight. It's I backwards, was... Gentlemen, didn't you know? Everything's backwards in space. Or when yeah, you're it's... inverted. <laughs> yeah, send me the t-shirt. I want one. Oh, that's horrible. All right. Well, all right. So what about the pop-up event? Trash? You're the only one that was close. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, Budio and I, we, we rolled down there. It was kind of a long drive, uh, some horrible traffic. Got there about an hour late, but that, that's okay because they started about an hour late. So <laughs> um, wow. the devs were super friendly. It was it was really nice. Um, they couldn't tell us anything hard, but apparently we were talking about – you remember when I hiked up the um, – when when uh, Budio and I did the 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 Austin tour of the of the actual facility, um, we, we were part of the the ten folks that got to sneak peek the uh, planetary uh, um, procedural generation, right? You know, and so we hyped that without you know without dropping what it really was, and uh, it was a big deal, right, to the community. Well, apparently they've got something up their sleeve that's supposed to make that look like like child's play. So there were no. No, there was no actual data drop, so I got nothing to leak, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> that is pretty exciting. And then that was that was in the face of them in the next sentence saying, "Oh yeah, but we're going back to the office to watch the video of the Idris flying and launching ships." Port <laughs> SR. So like, one thing sounds great, other thing's going to be better. Who knows what it is though? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I was just... actually I was actually closer than Traz to the Austin pop up event. It was like a concierge event, right? So if you have concierge, yeah. you were invited. Well, if you, if you bought one of those like VIP uh, concierge pop up card things for like ten bucks. Ah, see. Yep. Well, that's that way it you has didn't... a little bit of value to it. That yeah. you, didn't, you didn't get outside. it. No, oh, no, it was so sexy. Think... And I think you told me about it too, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, I'll I'll buy another Star Citizen thing." <laughs> and like, I in totally Planet Russia, that. Aegis bitch slap you. Got it? Okay. <laughs> Why didn't you get the card anyway? I'm not gonna ask. Uh, let me see here. It just looks like it's gonna be what held else? back to release. Oh yeah, I I don't know. Um, I know. I think I might have said that fast. A little bit. Uh, originally, I remember asking the devs whether or not we would, uh, the owners of Idris would actually see it in Hangar prior to it going to to uh, Squadron 42. Um, I mean, I know I know that Squadron 42 is a big part of the game, and you don't we don't want to have the story elements spoiled. But um, but I mean, damn it, I want my ship. I want it in Hangar. I don't know. What about you, Jerry? What do you think? Wait, this is news to me. What? What? I will. Well, because apparently, originally we were supposed to see it first because you know. 
CID policy has always been we're not going to hold ships back, you know, for any event or anything. When they're ready, they're ready and we'll release them, especially to the owners, because you spent enough money, you'll get to see it, you know, prior. But I guess uh, Squadron 42 is the special case because it seems like mm-hmm. they are now moving to the other side of that where, like, in this case, they're going to hold it back because they don't want to spoil anything. I don't know. What do you think? Well, well, the thought there is that apparently to, to put the Idris inside of the hangar, I mean, what would that actually facilitate? That being a remap of the entire hangar. And they're already trying to do that for the Starfarer. So, I- e- See, yeah. I don't understand that. I, I don't. Re- I don't know why they don't just put you like a a little shard instance in your elevator. You know, go get in your elevator and go down to your big ship or whatever. Were, right. Were the Idris and and the, the Starfire? I I didn't realize that they were gonna be in, well, in the hangar per se anyway. Because um, they don't... can't land. Well, the Star yeah. Fair can, and the actually the Idris. Can? Whether it can, yeah, and the Idris, whether it can land or not, is still up in the air. Originally, it was supposed to be the largest ship that could land when it was a Corvette. When it moved up to, when it moved up to, um, to frigate. a frigate, then you know it, it was a long, long-standing debate, and I don't know that we ever got any hard answers. But the ship is still built with like skids and crap so that it can land, theoretically. But um, I don't, I don't see why we would, well, why they would try to put it into hangars anyway. You would think that. That you just like like Joey was saying, you take an elevator, or you, you know you, you log into Port Olsar, and it's on one of those you know. And we've all seen that you know that that background that shows the the Idris and the and the um yeah. Yeah, I agree. It, it could yeah they could easily uh, make something like that. Well, I mean I'm saying that I'm not a programmer, but it would seem like a, a pretty easy thing to make. I mean it didn't wouldn't even have to be on a landing pad. It could just be. Um, Dock somewhere, or yeah, instance just from go there from the elevator. What yeah, about the jet? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, why not just you know make like a, a docking sleeve that goes outside and your Idris is hooked to it, or you know have an uh, yeah a landing pad you could walk to outside and then EVA out to all the big ships that are just out there floating. I mean, it doesn't have to like sit well, in the in the box with everything else. You know what I mean? Well, well, what what you do is uh, you go and you say since since everybody's got a big ship, it's going to be assumed that they have an industrial hangar. So what you do is you create a special like another hangar slot at the bottom, and you can only put one large ship in it at a time. So that way you could cycle out the ship that you want to see, and it doesn't take too much assets to do it. You're not going to sit there and try to like spawn all of the ships all at once and you know blow up your client, but yeah, and that would be that would be a good idea, I think, just to just to have one slot that could take the larger ones. Um, what about the javelin? Well, you know, more I, gritty. Um, yeah, yeah. The my um, <laughs> you can hear you can hear video in the back saying my bay, because <laughs> uh, you know we we have this ongoing argument about who Mine, the javelin. Uh huh. Who who the javelin actually belongs to, but anyways, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, they, they were they were talking about some of the good and bad of it. it well, it, it depends. Uh, they're talking about you know using a lot of they're both Aegis ships, so using a lot of the assets, reusing a lot of the assets from the uh, Idris on the javelin. Mm. Well, what comes to mind to me though is you know, when they say gritty, are they meaning like chop and slop, or are they meaning like it's going to be more grimy, going to be more dingy, going to be more dirty, yes. and that the Idris is going to be more refined? Yes. Basically, okay. the, the latter choice, I, I believe, is what they meant. Which you know, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but uh, I don't know. I mean, if it looks good, I mean, then again, I love the asteroid hangar because it's a little, you know, more. Yeah. Beat up and see when I when I think about them, you know, when I think about the Idris, I think of like a round corner. You know what I mean? Because it's sort of the, it's not the fighter of the group. It's the more defensive one. You know what I mean? And when I think of the javelin, I think of like the star destroyer. You know, it's all pointy and it's all angular well, and I, it I looks see, angry. I see the large large ships like that for area control. And in the case of the javelin, it would be more of an anti ship to anti ship weapon. But the when I think of the Idris, I think of more of a like a scout group or maybe an incident response, a a hot a quick response basically that needed more than just a few sabers and some hornets. Yeah, because it's mostly um, like the one without the railgun is more anti fighter than anything else. You know, it's not really all that great against ship to ship. Yeah, it has hmm. a 
it replaces its uh, capital to capital torpedoes with anti fighter missile um, mounts. It loses the big rail gun, and uh, but right, <clears throat> I mean, I, I see the Idris as a, as a force projection. It's gonna it's gonna carry the fight where you need it. You know, it's gonna be a repair bay, a refill bay, a, a launch bay, um, on top of having you know, uh, you know, it's it's basically a, a, a mobile fob. Yeah, and uh, basically a small fort in the middle of the <clears throat> the sea of space, I guess. Um, hey, what about port the, in the storm? Yeah, Big no boy. kidding. Uh, anyway, not your port. Uh, <laughs> still no hard data on crew needs. Uh, so, like, what do we, are we going to have to actually buy food, or is that going to be just a number that's going to be assigned and eat up some of your whole your, your cargo points? Is that going to be you know what about oxygen? You know, is uh, is a super hornet allowed to carry an extra tank of oxygen? Well, oxygen should be relatively easy to make. I mean. Um, that's, I think everybody who, who read the book or watched uh, The Martian um, is aware ox you, you can make oxygen just out of water and you can find water uh, in many, uh, many places in space. So I don't think that should even, or would even be a thing. That's right, that's straight from the scientists, y'all. Y'all can't argue with that. <laughs> the scientists with lots and lots of guns. You can't argue my data. <laughs> No, you know, and that's that's interesting. I, I, I think that actually could be an, an entire topic unto itself. Um, you know, like managing morale by providing more sleeping quarters, and I mean, not, not to say that we're going to get into you know space sims, but I mean the sims in space, but in the sense that uh, you know, I mean, just like the the exploration mini game actually included morale as a part of it so if you've got you know a full crew crammed into you know a freelancer you might run into something where your your npcs might particular might potentially mutiny if you don't care tend you know their basic needs you know because you're out in space and you're out of food or something whereas you know a more spacious ride will will help manage morale but uh I, actually you know but when it comes to crew needs especially in this case like uh you know Joey, you just you just picked up that bad puppy. What are you expecting for the total like human crew requirements versus NPC, if any? You know, like what do you think that ratio is going to be? What total crew do you think you'd want to have if you combine them both together, so on and so forth? Man, I don't know. I think it's it's more like an efficiency number. Like I'd say, just because it takes eight people to get it off the ground, it doesn't mean it's going to make it any more efficient than an Aurora. You know what I mean? If you got one person trying to put out every fire on that deck, then you know it's just going to burn up in space. So I, th I right. think because they showed like the bunks and stuff like that, uh, uh, since they showed the bunks, it's like double bunks. 13 racks, so that's like 26 crew, and then you think like the captain's quarters are separate, so that's like 27. Right. Well, officers. Then, uh, uh, yeah, the I bet you all the officers. officers have. Yeah, so. so you got hot, hot swapping, hot bunking. I, is, I wonder if that's going to be a thing, though, you know? Why, why not? Like, I mean, I, my, my, my theory is, is that I would have, um, you know, NPCs <laughs> in every single <laughs> turret 100% of the time. And then when you get into actual an actual scrap, all of your players that are you know hanging out in the ship or whatever would roll roll out to the and, and relieve the NPC gunner and take over a gunner position. Hey, yeah, see, but that, and then, and like, then that rolls into uh, that rolls into like right. crew needs too. If you have to provide food for them, then right. you know you got to double I, up. On. That that hot bunking idea that's that's going to be a no go though right off the bat because. I know the reason why you're not allowed to have women on the submarine. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you can't just. Open. That's that's actually changed. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, that, that's. I mean, they. Well, there, there's definitely the military culture is a lot slower to change than civilian culture, but the idea of of um, you know keeping women out of certain things is yeah anyway. It's not the fact that the woman is out of certain things. It's that they're out to port. They're out away for six months at a time. And they can't turn around on a dime just to sit because a person all of a sudden decided that they wanted to have an accident of a certain nature. Well, that's what birth control is for. <laughs> I'm pretty I'll sure in nine years in the future that you're going to be able to install a chip that moderates your, your hormonal 
you know. I no, 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 no. It's gonna be a switch. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a switch on your Moby glass to turn it on and off. <laughs> yeah. In preg now. <laughs> Loading. Oh dear wow. God, and, and and here's 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 a an ad lib from a a listener in the room. Um, Budio is telling me that there she was listening to a podcast where I guess a Canadian podcast where there were, some of the scientists were talking about like a uh, a patch that you know attaches at the back of the neck or on the neck or something that basically um, keeps your libido in check. So you know, <laughs> in space <laughs> they have that they had that in Vietnam. It was called P Tweeter. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's all. They always joke about. Yeah, they always joke about them feeding that, feeding us some chemicals in the MREs when we're. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, and then you know, it's like I don't, a, I don't believe it. As like a private and basic training, you're like worried about it. You're sort of just staring down in your bunk, <laughs> like, man, I hope you work again when we're when we're out of here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if anything, just the stress of basic was enough to keep you know most libidos in check, but not not always. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So, so does that does that fall under crew needs? I don't I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> it goes back to the morale question. Okay. So anyway, I wonder uh, what well, I, I have to agree. Yeah, I, I, I really want to know about some of the, the. Okay, so think about what Scott, what the some of the exotic mods for Skyrim is. I wonder what some of the uh, unique mods for Arena Commander would be. I you know. Yeah, okay, we can touch off. I'm, of a, I'm a grown-ass man. I'm not going to answer that question in public. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Right. Huh? So anyway, you know, I, I got to agree. There's a, there's a lot currently left to the imagination when it comes to the demands of capital ships. What do you guys think of the fleet dynamics gameplay? How do you want to see big ships move and shoot together in various situations? I think it's going to be way harder than anybody has even imagined yet. Like, if you think about it, my org is like, we're a pretty tight group. You know, we're all friends and we all know each other and we all game all uh, these different games together. We're like 23 people and that's not even enough to fully crew an Idris, much less a fleet. So, so right. that's like stapling Jello to a wall just to play one game together already. And now you suddenly have these massive ships all together and we need like double the people just to do what we want. And and everybody's going to have a job and a screen that they got to watch. And then you got to watch people to make sure you're not going to get shot in the back of the head. And <laughs> everybody's yeah. got fuel and food and bunk needs and stuff. It's going to be like the most demanding. It's going to be more stressful than than being an FC so, in the biggest Eve Corp ever. So, I y'all. Really you, I, I, really, I think you really uh, nailed it there. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. I mean, it's going to be. It's going to be uh, quite a quite quite the challenge because uh, right now what we're seeing is pretty much uh, you know um, a bunch of single pilots flying around in space and doing their thing, but um, to have like um, <laughs> but to have like fleet tactics and stuff like that that's that's going to be a whole whole new whole new learning curve. Yeah, I am. Um... I, I think that's uh, I think that's an interesting thing too because when you start talking about ship balance and you, know, you have all these people talking about oh you know we're going to be able to take down an Idris with you know a, a couple of um, a couple of uh, bombers and it's it's not it cannot it cannot be that way I, and I don't want to break into that conversation yet just because there's so much other stuff to talk about um, but we'll get we'll come back around to that about how ships fight and what roles um, fighters versus corvettes versus you know, freighters and, um, you know, the different ships have against each other. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, what, do you, what do you guys, for now, what do you guys think about convoy operations? Like formations, are they going to be something that's necessary, useful, or is it just going to be a mad scramble and uh, formations won't do a lick of good against an incoming force? I think formations are going to be pivotal to the entire thing because you're going to want to try and concentrate fire onto a single section. I'm thinking that these things are going to have such armor, such um, yeah, they're going to be so heavy that you're going to a single Idris isn't going to be able to take out a single Idris in the same in a good decent amount of time without having backups and and you know accessories and such. You're going to have to have multiple ships to try and focus fire on one, down it quick, and then go to the other one because 
I just don't see a one-on-one fight ending well for anybody. Yeah, and what a lot of people don't take into account is like we we have these we have like an org you know message or whatever we got all these people like theory crafting constantly you know over data we don't have or stuff we've made up or you know snippets of what we heard and we just ran with and <clears throat> for the most part like everybody's like you know two t- retaliators warp in on us we're dead well no because i'll just warp out and then he's got to chase me you know i don't have to sit there and fight <laughs> it's not like arena commander or the pu where we have like a tiny limited universe that we're stuck in you know I, we can turn around and leave you know, that's always an option because if those two retaliators don't bring E-War with them, then they're not going to down an Idris, you know, with active repair crew and fighters and things like that. I wouldn't put sucker punches on my turrets any. No, no, I'd never do that. Just eat that shield up and then bam. <laughs> what do you guys think about uh, scouting? Think it's going to be needed? Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. There's be there'll be people just flying around, buzzing. It, it'll be like a moving hornet's nest. Budia wants to know if there'll be cookies involved. Space cookies. What? Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Oh uh, no! But, you know, so like, I mean, will I mean? Do you think uh, scouts will be like? All right, like so for like an arena commander or even in, in local space, you know, you're flying within, you know. 2k or 5k or even 10k of like say you're flying in front of your, fl- your fleet will you think scouts will be positioned that close or do you think if they're that close that would mean too little response time so you think uh, capitals will have like a hundred thousand meters of range on on their sensor coverage ooh, ooh, me, me. Ooh, therefore hey, hey. scouts would be even farther out i got some oh, of this one. okay you first and then and then i want to go all right, all right. So, 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 so the radar is the radar on one ship. So you have Hornet trackers, right? And we're, let's just assume that the radar from a Hornet tracker can be uplinked to the Idris. Basically, you have a mobile radar blip that's moving around in the atmos- in the in the space, scanning the areas and being and being shared with the Idris in the, in the main ship. So this way, you have extensions of the radar bubble around the ship and so therefore the scouts are going to be relatively close but if they wanted to they could search another area and would still be able to feed data back into the address yeah and i think 90 percent of it is gonna be how like jumping and data feeding works you know because they said data is going to be like a something that has to be transferred so i mean scouting doesn't just mean like you're your scouts are going to be, you know, one jump ahead of you. They could have jumped days beforehand and plotted the jump points and relayed all that information back. And then it's just a matter of like clearing those holes again so that you can jump, you know, so the fleet is safe to jump. It's not something that has to be done all in one sitting. You know what I mean? One of the first things that I noticed about the Super Hornet is the fact that it actually comes with a jump drive. So it's able to go through the, uh, the wormhole, if you will. So you'll send out the Super Hornets first. They'll go and check and scan and look around, and then the ship will the, the mother ship will follow behind. So that's another thing that I was thinking about when you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, like the scout just doesn't have to be like actively scouting as you're actively moving. I mean, which is a which is a way you can do it. But I mean, if you wanted to take over a or if you wanted to sit in a safe system and have the scouts jump ahead like uh-huh. hours, minutes, days in advance, and then relay that information back, you know, that's one way to keep the fleet, uh, like, absolutely safer. Or say you don't have the people online to crew that massive monster and all your, your fleet assets, then, you know, you could you could plot a whole system and system and system jump, you know, days in advance. Yes. That way uh, you, could, you could cover massive ground to the next safe spot and, and one big leap. Yeah, it's, it's basically, you know, intelligence drives operations. You want to have uh, your forward scouts that do the the route planning and everything ahead of time. Um, I suppose in a more tactical situation, I can see. I, I don't know. Like, I would hope that your your command ships or your your big sensor ships, e warships, whatever that are a part of the the main fleet, would have uh, early warning. Basically, the types of sensors that can't tell you what ship it is. They can't. They don't have the resolution. To you know, differentiate between ten small ships flying in a close formation versus you know big ship, but at a very long range, they pick up that uh, they can pick up that that early the that early uh, those early pings, and then that way you can actually that way you actually have a reason to scramble interceptors out to go investigate closer. I mean, if if 
if the sensor model is so simple that, you know, you get in one range and every ship can see every other ship, that just, it's going to dumb down the game to where, like, why would anybody want to sit behind a a sensor control panel on a capital ship and do that role? The role is going to have to be, I guess, complicated enough to, to be interesting and take, you know, real skill in the same way that piloting a ship takes real skill, you know? I, I don't know, it's kind of where I was thinking with it, you know? Hmm. Yeah, be- because every every job that they've described so far is going to be super involved, you know? I mean, if it was like Planet Side where you're running around with a blowtorch putting out fires, then that's, eventually that's going to get old, but it's so, right. you know, component, subcomponent, all this stuff like that, that's going to be 100% focus. So, I mean, the navig- it's not so far-fetched to, to think that the navigational stuff is going to have, like, all these different onion layers, you know what I mean? Oh, qu- question, question, Ian. Uh-huh. You're the man with all the knowledge. What about a point defense system that actually takes out infantry, a.k.a. anti-EVA? Uh, that would be interesting. Well, you got to consider, like, when they were talking about the uh, Tavarn, their, uh, their uh, uh, boarding uh, ship is supposed to be a, like, an EVA boarding ship. Yeah, the Prowler is supposed to be, like, some kind of stealth ship that gets in close, and then, or even the, the modules and they were that they were kicking around concept wise for the uh for the um caterpillar basically a way to you know launch launch eva p- personnel who you know mag boot onto the side of the ship and they might start you know blow torching you know the air locks or, or whatever i don't know how the gameplay will work but that would be damn cool and it would give you a good reason to have, have you know external cameras and external you know anti-personnel pds systems it's a good idea I, I, I was just sitting there. I mean, every every time I ever think about the the point of defense systems, I always go back to the Death Star and like these giant turrets just turning and like trying to shoot the X wings out the out of the right, would be right. supposed sky. The bad expression, I know, but the point is, is that you, uh, what's going to actually buzz zap the people that are actually trying to get? I mean, uh, clearly. What is it? The constellation has a solution for that. You can just get on the Merlin and just zap the hell out of them, but you can't do that with any other ship. You have to fire your own ship. (laughs) Yeah, but still, you know, if pew pew, you know, (laughs) as opposed to boom. Uh, You know, I I don't know if a ship is still under its own power. I'm hoping that the force of of normal combat maneuvers in a ship would would break off anybody who's mag booted on just because of uh, external g-forces you know and that would be a good gameplay limiter because you know if you sneak up on the con and the con is just sitting there you're fine but if you don't complete your operation you get inside and they realize someone's on the outside they just hit full thrust and you just get tumbled off into space maybe or you can like you know just kind of slowly drive up to the corona of a star and f- turn on the shields to one side and have a free cook <laughs> you know <laughs> you know pirate kebab all right well, okay, so bomber defense. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we, are we talking uh, point turret defense? Are we t- talking like scrambling dedicated interceptors? I don't know. Uh, what, do, what, do, what do you think, Joey? What do you, what's going to be your preferred method or combination thereof? Well, I think for like larger like ship-to-ship bombs and stuff like that, there should be a mechanic that you could shoot the missile, you know, like like a, uh, your own peacekeeper kind okay. of thing, you know. Is that going to be yeah, a yeah, thing? Yeah. I think so. I, th- I, I hope. So I'm hoping that the torpedoes will travel slow enough and be large enough that they don't they don't act like just bigger, more potent missiles. You know? Yeah, because there's there's. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, it, it would it would have to be um, a combination of both point defense for um, for the bombers themselves as well as their torpedoes once they get in range. Um, but then at the same time, you would have to have interceptors to take bo- take out the bombers um, way ahead of time. So point defense uh, would be like your your last line of defense. Yeah, like or, or B- BVR torpedoes. Like I don't see why. I mean, honestly, the um, the um, <laughs> the retaliator ought to be able to launch beyond visual range. You know, torps. I mean, of course, they should show up on the radar and they should be traveling slow. You know, maybe even be you know pilot pilot uh, driven, <laughs> but uh, but whatever that you know <laughs> it, that'd be interesting. Strap like a little bit of caravan. Aloha snack bar. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Yeah, but, yeah, but I think I, that would definitely have to be like a a mechanic. I mean, 
Right. Because it's not like an Idris is going to suddenly, you know, go into a full flip and outrun a torpedo or anything like that. You know, it's just going to lay there. What about the well, squishies? Oh, the, the, the like, scrambling interceptors? I, I like that idea. I, I think, I think uh, having, I, I think uh, with an Idris, and I, I, again, and this is kind of goes into the next topic, so I don't want to get into it too much. But I think um, the the ships that you have on your Idris would probably be best served as anti incoming bomber, whereas your uh, turrets would be your point of defense against incoming fighters. Hmm. Yeah, because they're supposed but, to have auto turrets and stuff like that too. Maybe you could train the auto turrets just to fire at anything that moves that isn't well. Well, that's going to be something else, too. How are you going to know what's friendly and what's not friendly out there if everybody's just sort of the same? I mean, you know, you're going to have a criminal level or whatever, but uh, I don't know. That's a whole different topic, though. Auto turrets. They they blow my mind. Right. right. Like, how, do, how does an auto turret know that this guy is looking at me funny and I want him to watch it? You know what I mean? Right. Is it going well, to attack him when they attack me? Or? Maybe, I'm hoping that maybe. there will be a chance of failure. <laughs> well, I can't yeah. control. I'm sure you can. You'll you'll be able to assign uh, assign uh, hostility and authorize. I mean, actually, that and that's actually an interesting thing because, like, right now in in uh, no, no longer even in the PTU in live in live in Crusader, if somebody shoots you, you, you are now authorized to respond and kill them without gaining a, a a criminal level, right? You guys are aware of that mechanic, right? Yeah. But yeah. but yeah. guess what? Like, I was in a situation where I was in my ship about to get out of the ship and go into uh, Kovalex shipping station, right? And there's a whole, there's like four other ships all parked, all empty. This other douchebag flies in and starts trying to shoot at the parked ships. Well, um, I, never did I respond, I respond to the threat and kill him, but guess, and I got the pirate, I got a criminal rating because he hadn't hit me before I hit him. Hit him. So, what what would have what would have the way that they're going to need to resolve that or one of the ways I mean, I would think would be like if anybody shoots within a, a 360 degree bubble of your ship you get a you get a prompt that pops up that says you know authorize hostile action in, in other words basically designating that you take that near miss as hostility towards you but you can respond without being you know deemed a criminal and uh, you know and that way you can work as a guard against a group because I mean, I, you don't want to put yourself in the line of fire just so that you can, you know, now be authorized to respond. Yeah. And see, I had kind of the same thing happen. I, I went and I, I was goofing off in a freelancer and one of my work mates was sitting there in a saber and I started to lift off. And as a joke, he was going to nose in close and he hit V and he went into super cruise and slammed right into me and it registered it as my offense. Like suddenly I had a criminal level. Well, I mean, you are kind of offensive. I mean, you know, so. That's, that's <laughs> Man, your wearing... smell is criminal level. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and move on. I think we had some of that one. Uh, so, as far as, so as far as large capital ships are concerned, what kind of roles do you guys uh, wish to see? Imagine fighters, bombers, sub corvettes, classes, capitals, and all the above. Going out at it all at once uh, in one giant fight, I kind of have an opinion on this, but I want to hear you guys first. Um, um, Joe, you want to open with this? Um, so we're talking right. about like who, who does what on the battlefield type of thing? So the, basically, the this question was about how what are the roles? Like, are fighters going to be able to threaten capitals? Or... or Will bombers be able to single-handedly threaten? Not like, will they have to work together? And t like, how will they work together? Like, what's the balance going to be? Or you know, well, I, I guess it depends on the ship type. You know, I, I mean, obviously, one Gladys isn't going to be able to take down an Idris by itself. You know, but <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the but how, how effective? Is, but, how effective? Yeah. How many? How many should be able to? You know, how yeah. how many retaliators should be able to? And and think of it this way: going back to what we were talking about earlier about how difficult it's going to be to run an Idris. Like if you if you if you got to take twenty people and then another twenty NPCs to to crew this Idris, um, you know the amount of players that are involved. If you make the Idris so easy that you know you know six players across six you know retaliators, 
with a bunch of NPC crew men in their turrets can take out your Idris that has, you know, 20 people and 20 NPCs and all this other. Basically, you would never you would never get in the giant steel coffin. You know, it's exactly it, the number of players working together in unison. And because of the additional difficulty needs to be a force multiplier of how strong and how effective that can possibly be. Not saying that it, and that should be mediated with difficulty, I think. Yeah. And see, I know it's kind of want one hand and poop in the other one and see which one fills up faster, but I want an Idris that can be beaten on for a while. You know what I mean? I want it to be like broken and floating and venting into space and hurt and still be able to be recovered. Not just sort of like, I guess I was hoping for it in the constellation, you know, but once you get in a fight in a constellation, you either win or you're done. There's like, there's hardly any limping away from that. Cause once you get to the point of no return, you're, you're basically just toast. Cause that thing falls to pieces. And I don't, I don't know, you know, balancing issues or the way shields are working right. and the new component right. system coming in and whatnot. But you know, like I want like huge pieces sheared off, you know, I, even if it takes, three or four gladius just to, to beat on a, a constellation, you know, to get it to that point. I, I'm totally okay with that. Even if I'm not the person in the big ship, you know, it, it, I don't feel like it would feel very rewarding to fly up on an Idris and pop it in three seconds. Well, if it, well, it, citing great, great reference material here. If uh, the old cheesy movie independence day has anything to say about it, one, one airplane <laughs> can take out an entire mothership. Mm-hmm. <laughs> by a drunk, by a drunk pilot, uh, a corn crop duster. A corn duster. Uh, hey, I've taken taken <laughs> out entire command ships with my crop dusting. <laughs> Bo- Bo- she agrees. I was gonna say she's there with you. She's uh, that poor woman. <laughs> All uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I... Evacuate C deck. Evacuate C deck immediately. <laughs> I, I think um, I, I was talking to some other gentlemen about uh, capital class combat, and the way I see it is, I see that the turrets on on an Idris for them to be useful, they're they're not made as anti capital um, turrets, right? So why the hell would a fighter that has superior maneuverability and um, and uh, speed want to get in close to an Idris. So you have to make the fighters a threat to an Idris, but at the same time, you can't have single-seat fighters able to do damage. I mean, that's ridiculous. The idea of a single-seat fighter being able to, you know, do any damage to an Idris is kind of ridiculous. I, I can see if shields are down, they might be able to damage external components or external uh, turrets. Got it. But single-seat fighters, if it's hard ammo... It should be shrugged off. If it's laser fire, the armor's just too damn thick. But what I so the only thing that makes logical sense to me is if those fighters' laser weaponry can potentially just be used to focus fire and take down shield facings. By and so you have a multi-stage attack. So the fighters have to roll in and take down the shield facing on an Idris, which takes time, and then that opens up the opportunity for the bombers. That's when you have to time your bombing runs. You have to coordinate because, and and that implies that, you know, torpedoes are going to do very little to shields, but they'll do a lot of damage to like hull armor and things like that, but they have to get through the shields. So, you know, it mm-hmm. comes down to um, balancing, you know, torps to be, you know, heavy and slow and that you got to time it and you got to get past, you know, any, any tr- defenses or, or things that might shoot it down and so on and so forth, which then because the bombers are now your threat and they're part of a two-stage attack to get through to even, you know, crack part of the Idris's, you know, internal egg, that's why your Idris is going to have anti-bomber you know, fighters on board that they'll launch when, mm. when you well, know, those bombers are on the radar. I, that's kind of how I see it. And because uh, otherwise... Add to it, though. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. To add to it, though, uh, what I've always noticed was is I, I look at the weapons that people I I don't think people are going to use these weapons a lot. That's what that's what I look at. So I try Which to find weapons? an application. Well, I'm just giving an example. Uh, I'll give you one in specific: uh, the sucker punch. I don't think that people are going to like to use it, and I see there's some interesting gameplay aspects about that particular gun already. The thing of that I'm looking at is the sucker punch probably 
it's probably going to maintain that ability to eat through a shield really, really, really well. But it's also got a really, really small amount of range. So that means you have to get in close, but you're going to do a lot more damage to a shield. So in that case, for certain fighters, the risk might be worth the reward. You're, uh, and you got to understand, well, it's, a, right. it's, a blended, it's a blended weapon system. So you're going to have, like, you, on, a, on a Super Hornet, you'd have two Sucker Punches and four of whatever else. Right. Well, I mean, and I, and that's that's the thing is you have to give fighters a reason to get close to the Idris, um, you know. Otherwise, they're just not going to. And and if they're and if you balance the game in such a way that fighters have no reason to engage this giant capital ship with a bunch of turrets at close range, they're not going to. Which means that the Idris has all these turrets for nothing. So it it you know obviously to to make use of the things that are put into the game, the mechanics will have to reflect um, reflect that. But then fun, a lot fun. of the balance could also be with, you know, you're small and you can't really hurt me, but you're fast and I can't really hit you. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just imagine in my head, you know, like the the whole Admiral Akbar, like, you know, X ships go in with the sucker right. punches and yeah, knock out the shields. And then it's like, oh, fire, I've got to take power. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know right. what I mean? Think about the also the size of, of the given turrets. What's already been stated is, is that the smaller the gimbal, like the smaller the gimbal, the the quicker the response time. So think about the turrets for just a second. If you have a larger turret, it's going to be a slower to turn, slower to react turret. If you have a size one turret, just a standard issue, it's going to be really peppy and it's going to be really, really on the mark. So you can you can expect to see a mix of different turret styles as well. Maybe I mean if you're suggesting that the larger, the the biggest gun that you can mount on the Idris turrets will actually have an effect on another capital ship. Well, but I just, you know, unless those are like size six or or something, I I, I just, you know, it seems to me like the the fighter class of weaponry shouldn't even, shouldn't, it just should barely even scratch, you know, a capital ship. It should, it should threaten its external components and turrets and, you know, sensor equipment perhaps if the shields are already down and that's where, you know, hard ammo might be of use to a small ship. They might choose to sit outside of turret fire and try to knock off the turrets before their laser fighters engage. And that might force the Idris captain to launch his bomber interceptors early to try to t- take out those hard ammo ships, which means that, you know, if, if the other fighters then ambush those hard ammo def- or those defenders, then that op- again opens up the, the, the bomber attack run. So, you know, that, that turns it into a strategy game. I mean, at least that's the best I can see of it. I mean, there could be a completely different, I don't know, well, but, think uh, about uh, angle they go for. Think about turrets like this too, though. You could also have, like, say, you have a larger, like, a size three turret that's going to be really slow to turn, slow to move. Well, sure. I'm going to reference another video game, Sins of a Solar Empire. There, on the human on the Terran side, there is a flak gun. There's basically a a ship that's just nothing but a giant shotgun, and its oh, whole yeah. goal is just to spread bullets all over the place and and take out the drones and the other fighters and whatnot. So you can look at that and, and see in reference that that's just an idea. Another idea that they can use is they can basically mount a turret-style shotgun onto a ship like that and actually take out droves, potentially, if, if the guy's good at, good at using it and can time his right. shots right, he might be able to take out like two or three um, really, really light fighters at a time. Just the, the, the thing the thing with that though is is it, I know what you're talking about like when I played when I played a uh, <clears throat> homeworld homeworld 2 and so on uh, those games you had a lot of um, very specific role ships you know you had your fighters you had your interceptors you had your corvettes your 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 frigates and then you know you'd go up to destroyers and so on and so forth and the thing is is you would have these like you know anti-fighter frigates and you'd have these anti-fighter destroyers and you'd have these anti-capital ship and and it was all about balancing your fleet but the thing is is in star citizen you're going to actually have a crew of you know somewhere between one or two people in one ship to five or six on a freighter to you know 10 or 20 on a, on a capital ship if you dedicate an entire capital ship to a single role unless you're Unless the the game client or I mean the, the servers can support massive battles, which we're still kind of that's you know in the very very distant future, um, if ever. Um, but basically, you know, you you're not going to have you're not going to have like a, a capital ship where it's just all completely anti fighter because I, I think you just run into uh, situations where it would be too lopsided. 
I mean, maybe you could. Maybe you could outfit it that way. I, I don't know. Letter to D. Hmm. Fun thoughts there. <laughs> I don't know. We we ready to 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 move on? I know I know we've talked a lot about a lot of different things, but uh, there's always more. There's uh, I definitely had had some interesting questions for Joey if he uh, you know, he he's he's done the convoy thing. And done oh, the, the who cares about the terror. guest opinion? Just go ahead and give him those and with some questions. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know. Hey, Joey. So 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 what do you think? Like uh, um, compared compared to like you know real world operations, do you think uh, tactics? movement with a group of ships is going to be more like infantry formations where you spread out, you're doing wedges and you're doing things like that, or you think it's going to be more like vehicle movement where it's all convoy and then uh, you just have a, a certain SOP when it comes to a standard operating procedure when it comes to responding to enemy contact? Uh, I think it'd be more option B in that. I mean, it'd be it really depends on the group and how experienced they are because it's easy to you know, get tunnel vision and narrow in on one target and ignore comms and, you know, chase one guy around in circles. But I mean, with our group, we're really focusing on working together as a team and nice. possibly putting together like specific maneuvers for, you know, broad uh, situations and stuff like that. I mean, cause you, because you can't plan for everything. You just have to hope that your, your people know each other well enough that when something goes wrong, right. they know how to interact with one another to resolve the situation. But as far as like the slow movers and the soft targets and stuff like that, it's going to have to be very convoy based. You know, you're weak and you need to sit on my blind spot, you know, on my blind spot with your one gun and cover that and I'll cover, you know, the, everybody else, that sort of thing, you know, like tuck the starfarer up under the Idris and, you know, under, under it, you know, where one turret doesn't cover it and just have her little side guns as pew pew. And, you know, cause you're not going to dog fight with a fueler or, right. you know, the same with the crucible and stuff like that. It's going to be very much uh, smarter to say circle the wagons with the fleet body, you know, and then let the fighters do the fighting and stuff. You know, it, it all just depends on your people too, really. And how they react on like, well, I'm not going to say in cool combat. Idea. Yeah. That's like the coolest idea. I want to actually go and try to dogfight with Starfarers. <laughs> and well, see, hey, that, was a, that. that was a conversation we actually had. You know, well, I need like <laughs> five or six people in my in my Starfarer because, you know, it's got turrets and stuff like that. Well, I was like, no, because you're not going to be in a in an orbital barrel roll against a Gladius or something like that, slugging it out with them. You're going to be sitting <laughs> right here taken pot shots from a distance that actually that actually uh, is perfect because i was going to wrap up that final that topic with the final question of like what plans do you have for guarding your soft targets fuelers cargo ships miners uh science vessels etc well that would that would probably mostly be it you know tuck everything in close to closer to the idris where the idris can protect it and it can you know likewise sort of protect the idris and you know because right now we're we're crewing a small fleet, but it takes so many people. That's why right. stuff on this scale, even like as small scale as four what NPC. we're doing. Oh man, it's going to be horrible to have that many NPCs. Four, four, four NPC per person. Let's just make that an unassumed number. <laughs> <laughs> even with that, like if you're projecting numbers, like you need 50 people, that's still, well, you can't have 10 real life people and then everybody have, you know, four NPCs or whatnot. So, well, that's that's where you have uh, NPC fighter escorts. You know, those are the, like the cannon fodder. You know, that ride along with the with their would be host, and yeah, that guy rides beside you. And if and that really depends on how good the NPCs are, just like how good the auto turrets are. You know, is it worth the tech upgrade to have to put it on there? The extra money for for it to not be a a person who's gonna suck. You know, and have a computer do it for you at like half the accuracy. You know, it just depends on if the NPC is standing there in the hallway pushing a mop, and then he turns around to lick the window. You know, he's not really all that useful. It just <laughs> depends on how smart they're going to make the AI and like how how useful they're going to be, you know, because they've already well, said that it's not going to be as good as the average player, but I know a lot of people that suck. Uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, it, well, it, think about Vandal Swarm for, for a reference. Why, um, why, would you, why would you say those, those nice things about my mother? 
Ow, Your mother holds the phone in Battle Royale. All right, I'm just going <laughs> to... Anyway... Uh, what, what I've, I've never seen, seen a woman can... fly a saber like that classy lady. There is the there is the first way to increase difficulty, and this is the old Street Fighter method. What they used to do is just do more special moves over and over and over and over again until until they beat you. If you put on hard mode, that's what you got in Street Fighter. That's so you can make the AI more. Yeah, you can sit with me. Uh, you can actually have all kinds of guns and, and missiles and, and weapons firing out of these uh, vandal. Or you can also actually have them have a higher skill set, have a higher base. So which one would you rather have? Would you rather have something that's going to shoot a lot more at you, or you're gonna, or do you want to have something that's actually going to act more like a like a pilot, like a player would? That's that's the like end of the player. day question. I mean, the yeah. whole thing is they promised us, you know, NPCs that were going to be relatively indistinguishable from another player. So hopefully, the the piloting will be frightening. <laughs> yeah, I can no, get into right swarm. Now, right now, the AI is embarrassing. Well, yeah, yeah, I can get into swarm, and it, it fly. They they fly straight whenever they should be like trying their damnedest to get out of the way of the line of fire. They're just sitting there playing flying straight. So uh, just bam, bam, well, bam. You know, yeah. and that's that, that's okay for like certain areas of space. I mean, you, you want players to have a range of of difficulty to go up against. But but when players really when their players actually go up against like straight up Van Duel, I, I think they need to walk in and be like, wow, that's that was tough. Like you know what I mean? Like one on one with a you know what I mean? Like cause you, you can have a one on one fight with another pilot and you might even know that you're better than them. You can tell from the way they fly and you still have a, it still takes five minutes to kill them just because, uh, you know, well, the, the I'll tell the you what weapons you might be loaded or the ship they're flying or, or, or whatever. I, I'll tell you what, Ion, you trade me computers and then I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll show you <laughs> okay. whether or not I'm good or bad. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, what? go ahead. I was just saying I shoot between frames. <laughs> yeah, that that's always tough, man. Like, I, I I swore I would not go that route again. Like, I, I had to suffer that when I used to play EverQuest 1 way back in the day. And oh. uh, this time around, I actually had the expendable income, so I made sure I was uh, set up well. And, uh, and it's nice. It's nice. But, yeah, there is also but, that one. That's, that there is that one other part. That's that's the other unmentionable thing. There's just going to be some people that all they have is their Aurora, and they can't really afford to upgrade their computer. And so, those people are going to look like they stink, but in reality, their tech actually limits their ability to be proficient. Sure, sure. You know, I mean, hopefully they'll they'll have they'll hopefully there'll be a lot more gameplay than just the Twitch and the and the sim portions of the combat piloting, even though that's a big part of it. I mean, Star Citizen is designed around taking advantage of, of you know, high-end computers. So, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't have an expensive buy-in, but uh, if you want to, if you want to be competitive, then uh, you kind of gotta, you know, go the distance. But also with that, if you think about think about Mr. Bangle Engineer down there in his little room, he's not loading everything on the battlefield. I mean, the server's communicating right. it, but he might be down there flipping switches and changing fuses and not even know there was a fight. You know, this is just me doing my job. And here, you know, even on low settings with, you know, a, a hand crank internet connection, he'd still, you know, he can still do his little thing and, and play while everything else is going on, you know, because the way they're trying yeah, to optimize it. If I had a 56k modem sound clip right now, I would have played it. That would have been great. <laughs> and, God bless. Don't do, Love it. don't do that. Just don't do that. Flashbacks. All right, Joey. So I got a, a, a nice open-ended question for you. So I hope you're ready and on your toes. All right, here I am. All right. So so your outfit, Virtus Eterno, is looking to run the industrial ops angle in the early game. Get out of dodge and all that. What kind of consideration? do you think are going to be clutch for that kind of gameplay experience everything ever we have discussed everything but the biggest thing <laughs> is probably fuel constraints like how far can each ship go how much can the starfare refine if we separate into task force how many how many task force can one starfare support before we need to add a second oh yeah stuff like yeah. that so no, no, mainly no, it's, 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 it's all about answer. fuel yeah 
I mean, and, and that's the thing is it's theory craft. So, I mean, there, there is no wrong answer, but I mean, I, I kind of agree. I think the logistics that go behind, I'm hoping, I mean, I, I know, I know that they, they want this game to be fun and that, you know, a lot of the community is, is, you know, so, you know, in bed with the, uh, you know, the, the console idea of, you know, just, you know, respawn and kill and respawn and kill. But I, I just, I mean, I, I want uh, the distance to be, be meaningful I, I want you know i want you know getting to that that far-flung you know gas giant isn't just about pointing your nose and clicking a button and then you know a couple minutes later you're there um i mean i want it to be like you know required navigation and logistics and and fuel fuel planning and and you know refueling your your fighters that you know you can't necessarily keep docked the whole the whole route um yeah i, I think it'll be good i don't know what yeah, about you they're, like, what they're what working you on glass cloud, or i'm sorry they're working on gas cloud tech right now they said in in january so i i mean i see it yeah, coming I soon that. enough we might have some like some, we might have some actual like metrics to it soon so that'd be cool be cool how about you, yeah. what do you what do you think of the uh of the like the how intense logistics should be in, in some way i think that it should be like well like the pvp slider bar there should be like a realism bar do you actually want to manage every single thing or do you want to actually kind of taper it down and let the ai or the auto npc or whatever you have working for you do some of it that's it, it should be it should be up to the player really it shouldn't really even be a question uh, you know, I, I for myself, I I would like to actually have it automated because I don't want to have to worry about logistics. I don't want to have to worry about moving the ships around or you know getting the food or getting the bullets or getting this or that. And I really just want to be able to log on and have everything ready and fly. I I think maybe that'll be the difference between like, like single seat ships versus you know freelancer to constellation class ships up to you know basically the bigger you go ship wise the more the game experience changes, you know? And also, you know, that, like, you might want to do single-seater stuff, but then when you want to do single-seater stuff as a part of a, of a bigger fleet, then, you know, then you also have to take into account that you're going to have to be docking with that Starfare and refueling and doing some of those things or landing to get repairs on the Idris, so you have to add those skill sets to your repertoire. But, uh, uh, you know, and then if you want to be the captain on a, on a, on a goddamn Idris, you're going to have to, you know you're going to be like a commanding officer in the, or, you know, a senior NCO in the real world. Like you're going to have to, basically you're going to have to be a, a project manager. You're going to have to understand all of the assets you have. You have to understand their advantages and disadvantages and be able to make those leadership calls. It's not for everybody, but you know, you know it will, it would be an amazing experience, you know? Yeah. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be stressful and terrible and it's going to give me gray hair. And I, I love thinking Crew about around. it all the time. <laughs> there's, there's, there's the other, there's the other thing that we didn't touch on any crew, mor crew morale. Can you actually make your NPCs afraid of you, and keep them <laughs> subordinate? Can you go all like, uh, uh, what is it? Not, not Malkavian? Is that what it is? Malkavian. No, okay. you know, that's Malkavian. there. That's it. I, re I remember something along those lines. Um... <laughs> the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember. I can't put my finger on it, but I, no, I think this was a conversation we had on the show uh, a few weeks ago. I I've been pouring all this Star Citizen information in my head the last couple of weeks over like podcasts and things like that, and uh, I've come across somebody saying like your own NPCs, they're gonna love you regardless, you know, but you know, they're not gonna turn around and shoot you in the back of the head, but uh, you know, uh, they're not. In, NPC that you hire from Doc, you know, that might be a chance. But, you know, your own your own secondary tune isn't just going to turn around and go, look at me. I am the captain now. You know, that's not going to happen. Uh, no, 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 let's see. Well, well the, the, there, that is completely possible, actually. And what it is is like, hey, buddy, I need some help. Okay, let me log into your account as your NPC. Okay, thanks for being here. Hey, look, you got some really cool stuff. Yeah, you like it? Ain't it neat? Kapow. I just imagine that whole scenario with like a Ken and a Barbie doll, you know, like birds and the Ain't bees nice? talk. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they're playing. Well, house. I could completely. I could. I could completely they're playing a little spaceship on the prairie. The prairie. <laughs> Wait, there is. Can, isn't I, a can I show you my Merlin? There's a frontier. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, you've spent way too much time. 
Oh, dear Lord. You spent way <laughs> too much time waxing that Merlin. <laughs> I, I will say, I will say this. A long time ago, they talked about uh, NPCs that you picked up outside of UEE space wouldn't be, I guess, they wouldn't uh, necessarily be restricted on some of their uh, loyalty. Shooting you in the face, ness. Whereas if you <laughs> if you get like yeah, if you get like an NPC in UEE space or whatever, they're they're going to be bonded, I guess, you know, against betrayal. Um, but I don't know. I've never heard anything else more about that. So, you know, I, I know that they've been talking about working on AI a lot. So I really, I really hope that they're not messing around. You know, I, I have a lot of, a, a lot of high hopes for the, those, those three dudes that started out in, in Kythera. And I don't know if they're even, even part of the team. I don't think I've heard their names mentioned in forever. Um, I don't know if that just got rolled over, over to Germany or if that got rolled over to, to, you know, mm. who knows, but, uh, but, you know, I, you know, a great game can be ruined by a crappy AI, and uh, for this game to be great, it's going to need good AI. So, well, speaking of AI, it's about time that we disengage the ion. Well, guys, we're getting close to the end of the show, so when you're ready, we'll go ahead and kick off the final five questions. Are you ready, Joe? I'm as ready as I can be. All right. Question one: Keyboard and mouse or HOTAS? Filthy keyboard and mouse player. Dirty, Better than dirty. Those no, 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 it's better than console users. Flyer, uh, favorite flyable ship? At the moment, the Sabre. Console peasants. Favorite future ship? Uh, the Idris, or the Carrick, it's like a tie. And really, I don't mind consoles, people. Ballistic or energy weapons, maybe something else? I love energy weapons because I love just pouring out an obscene amount of, like, energy rounds downrange. Daka. Daka, yeah. Daka. All the Daka. So, okay, so one more joke in between questions. Dyslexic gamers on die. Wait a minute, unite. Sorry. Uh, craziest shenanigans you want to pull off after the game launched. Operation GTFO, where we take a fleet of amazing ships in a random direction to inevitably die in a fire. All right. Well, that was some really, really wonderful answers. Very, very skilled. Very, very epic. Very, very Warcraft. Wait a minute. Wrong, yeah, wrong thing. Um, now. Really seriously, thank you for coming on to the show tonight. I want to, you know, you know, and we really do appreciate you hopping in here, and you know, being somebody that we can pick on for the next hour or so. So, anytime you'd like to do it again, just come on back, please. Hey, don't threaten me with a good time. Oh, threaten you. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, to all of our listeners, new and old alike, thanks for your spending your uh, hard-earned time with us. Yeehaw! If you liked your show, be sure to like and subscribe. You know feedback is even more important than that you know give it to us because uh, we're working to improve every single episode so uh, hopefully you can tell if you've been following us for a long time and if you're new out of hell with it hopefully we rocked your socks off and don't forget that the show is brought to you in part by big ben's pizza and if you liked our intro and after music today check out the uh, show notes and the youtube links great stuff and i am <laughs> all right thanks everyone we'll see you next week godric if you're ready Table flip us that outro beat. Right, <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm already dancing. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna turn her around. You. Whoa. Damn. Situational awareness is important. We're totally doing it. It's an outro music. I love it. Every single time. We just can't. We can't hold out. We can't hold out. What a smooth ass honky. Woes. Woes. Woes? Woeser? Yeah, I didn't even swear one time. Aren't you proud of me? Fuck no. <laughs>